is killing me. I'm trying, my man. I'm trying. Shut up, okay? Just chill. I didn't put you in this position. Hey, I'm going to fill you in real quick. Uh, we're going to get a call about this. It's King Cutter on a golf cart flipped over. He's 1055 bad. Yeah, I'm going to give you all a heads up on who it is. King Cutter. You know what the perception is here is that you did a public official a favor. Is there anything you want to address about that? Okay. This incident was not handled properly by the trooper. What his motivation may have been, I can't speak to definitively. He didn't do his job the way it was supposed to be done. A South Carolina public official suspected of drunk driving and crashing his golf cart in June was never investigated for driving under the influence. The state highway patrol says one of their own failed to do his job when he purposely didn't investigate the official for DUI. The question now, why? That's what Chief Investigator Reporter Jody Barr wants to work to find some answers with failure to pursue a Queen City News investigation. The owner of this iPhone was in a severe car crash and is not responding to their phone. The emergency location is latitude 33.6793. So were you responding to the area of Bloomville Road and Davenport Drive in reference to a welfare check? We was called in by iPhone detection, unknown name of your driver at this time. Uh, they were not getting an answer. Just before 1.30 in the morning. I'm trying, my man. I'm trying. Shut up, okay? Just chill. I didn't put you in this position. Clarendon County Sergeant Lane Jones found the county's public defender, King Cutter, pinned under a golf cart. What's your name? No. Hello? Oh my God, thank you. What's your name? Thank you. What's your name? You got an ID on you? Yes, yeah, King. Okay, I thought so. The deputy's body camera recording shows no one other than Cutter was at the crash scene. Were you driving? No. Okay. And if someone else was driving, they didn't stick around to help. King, where, hold on. You got a lot of blood down here from just. Just hang tight. There's more blood right there than what I've seen in person. I'm good. I'm good. You're not good, man. Are you bleeding anywhere else? No, nah, I'm good. You're bleeding from the top of your head. You got a head injury. I'm good. Tough. Well, it's going to be a middle-aged male patient. He's got pretty good road rash on both legs. I'm good. Also I'm bleeding good. from the top of his head. He is conscious and alert at this time. The deputy tried multiple times to get Cutter to agree to go to the emergency room, but Cutter refused. King, look at me. You've got a busted head. I need you to just sit down, that way you don't fall out. I understand you're okay. I get that. Look at all this blood. That's from your head. That's where you were laying. But I can't go to the hospital, dude. You need to go to the I hospital. Walk you walk walk walk. I can't. I promise. Please. I can't. Well, that's, that's up to the to the medics, okay? I'm telling you, you hurt. I'll okay. be honest with you. You hurt, okay? Can you? That is from a Lane to King perspective. You are hurt. Thank you, buddy. The recording reveals who Cutter claims left him at the scene. Can you call my brother-in-law? Which one? John Rogers. John, John Rogers. Michelle? Michelle? Yeah. yeah, I know JR. Is, where's JR live at? You think he can come get the golf cart? Yeah, he's right here. Yeah, cool. Was John with you? Yeah. Is he John hurt? No, I don't think so. Yeah, you know if John has his phone with him? Yeah. The recording also showed because of the people involved, the deputy was concerned about the sheriff's office handling the investigation. They are on the show is somewhere nearby. Can we even work there? Our patrol's going to have to call my captain now. In a phone call from the scene, the sergeant believed King Cutter was drunk. Hey, I'm going to fill you in real quick. I'm going to get a call about this. Showed up to a wreck on the Road. It's King Cutter on a golf cart. Flipped over and he's trapped under a golf cart. He's 1055 fast. The sergeant's calls that night included a call to Trooper Will Baker, who was working a highway patrol roadblock in the neighboring county. The video shows the trooper knew instantly who they were about to deal with. Yeah, I'm gonna give y'all a heads up on who it is. I don't know who's calling. King Oh God, crap! All right, all right, hold on. Hey, that golf cart? Uh -huh. That's uh. I'm on the phone with the sergeant from Clarendon. When Trooper Baker started telling his supervisor, Corporal Datrick Prince, about the Cutter crash, Baker turned his body camera mic off. Highway Patrol policy allows troopers to do this when talking privately with their supervisor or DPS attorneys. The Clarendon County Sheriff's Office gave us the deputy's recording, which captured the deputy side of the remainder of that call 
with Trooper Baker. The recordings are evidence the Highway Patrol knew exactly who Lewis King Cutter was and his title before the patrol ever got to the scene to investigate. A half hour into the call, King Cutter still would not let medics take him to the hospital. With his injuries, Cutter could not perform field sobriety tests. King, you don't want to let yourself take your hand so you head up? I don't need a hospital. You don't want to go? No. Well, how do you, how do you get your head set up? I don't need it man. tomorrow? Yeah. The only other way to test his intoxication level, the trooper had to get a search warrant for a blood draw. He's refusing to go to the hospital. That's probably because of blood. If I had to guess. No, you're not on arrest yet. Yet? I know. You bring along. Well, that's fine, but I'm not in charge of this investigation. Corporal Prince of South Carolina Highway Patrol is. And you know, just as good as anybody, he's going to come do his due diligence. And whether he finds a law broken, if whether he finds a law broken, he'll make the charge. If he doesn't, he will not. Coming up, a trooper with nearly two decades of experience took over the investigation. When I got here, he was laying here. This is his head mark down here. His brief Who was laying head. there? King Cutter. Within days, the Highway Patrol started looking into one of its own. He did not thoroughly investigate the, the DUI related collision, and he did not follow through with what we believe would have been an appropriate DUI charge. Did you do a favor for this public official the night you went to that crash scene? Is there anything you want to say? When failure to pursue continues after this. Hi, I'm Captain Bowen with the Office of Professional Responsibility, and I'll be conducting the interview today with Corporal Dadrick Prince of the South Carolina Highway Patrol, who is the subject of this investigation. And the allegation is negligence in the performance of duty. Within a few days of Corporal Dadrick Prince closing his investigation into the assistant public defender's golf cart crash, patrol supervisors pulled the trooper's video recordings. I'm good on it. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Working to figure out what the trooper did when he got to Clarendon County. Prince's supervisors learned, instead of filing a DUI charge, he wrote the public defender three traffic tickets. Trooper Baker was the one that received the call, so he came to me and he you know, asked, could I take his DUI and he would go to Clarion County. I think I do remember him saying, hey, that's the public defender, King Cutter, from Clarion County. I said, but no, um, you guys are all, you know, you got drunks. Y'all go ahead, take those guys to jail, whatever you need to do. I'll go to Clarion County and handle it. You know, the wreck, so. Prince told the patrol's internal investigator he didn't know King Cutter before that night, but he did know Clarendon County deputies believed Cutter was drunk when he crashed his golf cart at the intersection of two county roads. At one point, I did call Sergeant DeBose and just let her know, give her heads up, hey, they gave me a wreck, you know, involving the public defender King Cutter. They said he's drunk. I said, I don't know anything yet other than that. I said, we just received a phone call, so I'm going to head over there. And, you know, she said, well, let me know what you got, so. Prince's dash camera shows his arrival. No, I'm up. Ain't going to the hospital already? Okay. The trooper spent seven minutes investigating and photographing the scene, including the alcohol evidence on the ground. He then went to the hospital to interview King Cutter. I tried to wake him up at first, so I asked, you know, talked with the nurses, and they said, well, no, he should be awake. Of course, get him awake at that point. Talking with him right there, I couldn't smell anything. Treat him like I would everybody else. I didn't provide him any preferential treatment or anything like that. I conducted an investigation based off of what I had. I didn't have enough to, you know, go forward with trying to prosecute or write a ticket for DUI. I couldn't do field sobriety on one because he had a, a nasty head injury that required stitches. Training always tells us, you know, you, Somebody got a head injury like that, you know, it's more than likely. The HDN is not going to be there that you want to see or, you know, vice versa. And he had a leg injury, so he couldn't stand up for me to even perform anything else. So my thing at this point is I don't have enough to go on to go forward. Prince was also aware of the deputy's report, which indicated Cutter was heavily intoxicated at the scene. I read Clan County's report, but i rather see them make DUI arrests. They always call us to you know, make DUI arrests, so, I mean, everybody has their opinion on, you know, who's drunk or whatnot, so. The internal investigator pushed back, reminding Prince the law gives troopers the authority to get a search warrant to test blood in cases like this. But, Corporal, you have other options, do you not, sir? Such as getting blood? No. You thought enough to ask him if he's been drinking, and when he acknowledges that he has, you ask no follow-up questions. You don't go in and seek a, a blood sample. Why not, sir? Because the evidence is there, captured by you. 
these beer cans and your body camera asking him if he's been drinking mm -hmm. and he tells you yes you, after he tells you yes yes I had a little you didn't ask him how much and you didn't ask him specifically when your next question is what year is the golf cart and then it turns out he, he has a position that's a prestigious position mm -hmm. so you understand how it looks it, it looks like he got some preferential treatment because of his position. That is definitely not it. At the end of the interview, Corporal Prince made an allegation against the deputies on scene that night. Notifying the captain when he asked me, called me in and, you know, told me, hey, you being rid up. I explicitly told him, I said, hey, I think Clarendon County's out to get this guy. I think they have a vendetta against this guy. I made that clear because, I mean, it's like everybody pushing to try to... You said the sheriff's office? Yeah. Is out to get King Cook? Yeah. I mean, they... Hey, this guy like to drink. Uh, he, you know, he's a known DUI person. Yeah, yeah. My thing is, if he's a known drunk in the area, y'all know he like to drink. Y'all can pursue, you know, stopping him and writing him ticket, taking him to jail and stuff like that. But they don't want to seem like the bad guy because he's a public defender for a clan county. They have to work with him, so they would rather push it off on us or Highway Patrol and myself in particular to write this guy DUI and try to get him disbarred and stuff like that. We sent the transcript of Prince's allegation to Clarendon County Sheriff Tim Baxley. The sheriff would not interview with us. Instead, he sent this statement, calling the trooper's allegations absurd and without truth. I'm just moving my car to the medic and coming here. The sheriff says his standard policy is to hand crashes to the patrol, and the video shows his deputies did exactly that, adding, in this specific incident, Corporal Prince failed to perform his investigatory duties. His unfounded allegation against our office was his attempt to deflect and shift blame from himself. The South Carolina Highway Patrol's internal investigation determined Corporal Prince failed to perform his duties as evidenced by his subsequent demotion and transfer to another duty station. Did your trooper that night do this public official a favor. You would have to ask the trooper that question. From our perspective, he did not do his job. He, he did not thoroughly investigate the, the DUI related collision and he did not follow through with what we believe would have been an appropriate DUI charge. Robert Woods heads the state's Department of Public Safety and signed off on Corporal Prince's disciplinary decision, stripping him of his corporal rank, cutting his base pay $5,000 and moved him to another part of the state. This incident was not handled properly by the trooper. What his motivation may have been in not handling it properly, I can't speak to definitively. But what I can speak to definitively, he didn't do his job the way it was supposed to be done. And that is an issue of public trust, and that is an issue that this agency takes very seriously. The patrol never charged Lewis King Cutter with DUI, but the traffic tickets, driving too fast for conditions, no insurance, and no registration were still pending in August. Clarendon County Chief Judge Robin Moody approved our request to bring a camera in to record the August hearing. But the day before the hearing, it was canceled. When it was rescheduled last month, court clerk Susie McDowell would not tell us the new date. The DPS director's office did, and we showed up for it. I guess they don't want you bringing the camera in. I don't know what the issue is for that. Y'all got the camera out here. Court sent this trooper out to keep our camera out of this public building. The judge claimed a camera in the courtroom, even without a jury inside, would be disruptive and would not allow us to show the public video of the bench trial. The court then opened the back door in an apparent attempt to keep us from finding the people we were there to see. The first of those people, Trooper Datrick Prince, who pulled up to the back of the courthouse nearly 10 minutes after court started. Mr. Prince, hello. Hey, we talk to you before you go in. Did you do a favor for this public official the night you went to that crash scene? Is there anything you want to say? Then 20 minutes after court got going, well, he looked back. Public defender King Cutter showed up at the back door, but he had to drive around front and use the public entrance. How you doing, Mr. Cutter? Hey, hey I'm Jody Barr with Queen City News. Can we grab you before you head in? No, that's all right. I sent hey. you a statement. That'll work. Good I know it. Yep. Were you drunk the night you crashed that golf cart? I sent you a statement, Jody. I appreciate it. You didn't address the alcohol allegations from the patrol. Okay. We asked Cutter for an interview, but he declined and sent us a statement explaining the mishap happened when he turned too sharply in his neighborhood. Cutter's statement did not mention anything about the suspicion of DUI. 
Once inside the courthouse, Cutter, Trooper Prince, and the patrol's general counsel met privately behind this door, marked Courtroom B. During the hearing inside the main courtroom, the patrol agreed to dismiss the no insurance and no registration tickets, and King Cutter paid the $155 fine for driving too fast for conditions. Mr. Cutter, do you feel like you got a uh, you got some help that night from this trooper by not investigating a DUI? I'm uh, heading over to football practice. We're a coach. We're trying to win a state championship Friday night. I got you. Appreciate you going to me and have a good day. Do you think that you were treated differently than anybody else would have been Not that night? All. Not at all. Do you have any regrets from that night about this case? No comment, man. You know what the perception is here is that you did a public official a favor. Is there anything you want to address about that? No comment. Do you still think that the deputies were out to get this public official that night, like you told OPR? No comment, man. All right. Thank you. <laughs> During court last month, King Cutter handed these documents up showing he's now insured and registered his golf cart. But these records show he did not get that insurance or registration until June 12th, the day after the patrol charged him. Meaning at the time of the crash, he was driving uninsured and unregistered. I asked the patrol why the agency agreed to drop those charges. The patrol told me it's standard practice to negotiate pleas like this. The on-site prosecutor was aware of the insurance and registration dates, but those charges were dismissed as part of the plea bargain. The trooper is now working in a post just south of Columbia.